Okay, so here's my video tutorial for you on um, setting up sort of the potometer in general, and then I'm going to look at a specific independent variable and kind of run you through the method and the idea behind the practical. So this is my potometer setup. I've drawn it in quite a simplified way, um, but in general, what we have obviously, whoops, is our plant that we are using because remember transpiration has to happen in a plant okay and what's important for that is that it has been cut the stem has been cut diagonally underwater and the reason for that is it prevents any air bubbles getting in if you've got an air bubble kind of halfway up your stem like that for example it's going to affect the rate of transpiration because the water is going to hit that air bubble and then it's going to stop so it could give you false results so in terms of our plant, that's what's special about it. We've cut it diagonally underwater to prevent any air getting into the um, xylem and flow. Uh, as we're looking at the xyla, so excuse me, as we're looking at water transpiration, we are interested in air bubbles getting into the xylem. I've now got my potometer set up. Um, if you have a look at one of the other videos, the second video link I've put on there, you will actually see what it looks like in real life. Um, this is a fairly simple diagrammatic representation of it. Okay, so you have your plant uh, sort of inserted into the top. The, the bottom of the stem that's been cut diagonally is inserted in the water. There's a series of pipes. It's connected to a syringe. And at the end, we've got our capillary tubing. All of this is airtight and all of this is set up underwater, once again, to prevent any air bubbles getting into it. In terms of your method, it is perfectly acceptable to write, set up the potometer underwater, cut the plant underwater with the stem cut diagonally to prevent any air bubbles. That would be more than enough detail for that particular part. Okay, now why do we have a syringe? Well, because, um, first of all, let's look at what's gonna actually happen in the experiment. So here, at the end here, I have given myself a deliberate air bubble, okay? That is the air bubble that we are want and we are interested in. Because as my plant takes up water, the water is gonna move in this direction towards the plant. And so that means that my air bubble is gonna move in that direction towards the plant as transpiration happens. Now this capillary tubing, as you can see, has got a scale on it, like a ruler. And so we can measure how far along that air bubble has gone in a certain period of time. Remember rate of transpiration, we're gonna do distance moved, divided by time, okay? So you might do millimeter per second, you might do centimeter per second, you might do centimeter per hour, whatever unit is appropriate. Okay, any of those things. Now, obviously in an investigation, we want to do repeats. And so we would need to reset that air bubble back to the beginning by replacing the water that's been used by transpiration. And so that's where our syringe comes in. So it's to replace or reset during or um, in between repeats. Okay, if we didn't have that, then it could be that actually we run out of water and so we're gonna affect our experiment. Okay, so that's a quick information about the setup. Now, how can we use this to uh, actually investigate uh, rate of transpiration well here i haven't drawn this out again i've just used this box to represent my potometer setup okay so here you can see my plant here i've got a light source and i've got a, a meter ruler or a normal ruler would work because i'm using a light source my independent variable the thing that i am changing is going to be light intensity okay now how are we going to do that because if you look in that rubric you need to give suggestions of uh, range and how you're going to do that so in terms of light intensity, we are varying that by putting the light source different distances from the plant. Okay. So you need to suggest a suitable range. So something like 10, 20, 30, 40, and let's say 50 centimeters would probably be a good suggestion. Okay, a suitable range. Dependent variable, what are we measuring and how are we gonna measure it? Well, we're measuring rate of transpiration. And we're gonna measure it by our distance, air bubble moved in capillary tube. For our control variables, remember you need three. So what we should really be trying to do here is linking our other factors that affect and transpiration. So the first one is going to be humidity. And our second one could be temperature, both of which can be controlled by using an air conditioned room. Okay, we can maintain the temperature. So ensure our temperature is set at 24 degrees, something like that. And um, humidity can be the same. Okay, another control variable that we need to think about is our time. Okay, I wouldn't let the capillary, um, I wouldn't let the first repeat 
do it in, I don't know, 30 seconds and the next one leave it for four hours. So humidity, temperature and time are going to be our control variables. Okay, so have a little think about how you would actually do this, what your method would look like now that we've picked out our IVs, DVs, CVs and we've had a little chat about the equipment.